My goal is to get women to wear pretty shoes that they can go dancing in and not have to take them off and can actually go home at night and be comfortable for the entire evening. I keep telling people Cinderella didn't want to go to the, the ball and take her shoes off. She wanted to wear heels and dance all night. And that's, that's the dream, that's the goal, and, and now it's attainable. I don't know why I thought I could just run to Italy and, and get people to make shoes in a different way. When you're a female American running to Italy and, and telling them that there's a better way to, to do things, it's not easy to change minds. It took a lot of trial and error. It took a lot of different ways of doing that before we, we ended up perfecting the product. Making this high fashion comfortable is the best. I mean, this is the answer to many girls and women that I've talked to through the years. I see what's happening. I hear what people are saying after they come to the showroom here in, in New York and they put the shoes on, they're going, oh, I can't believe it. These are actually comfortable. My goal is to disrupt the way women look at, at purchasing footwear enough that other players are going to need to do this, that women are going to demand it because they know there's a better way. They've never, they've never known, they haven't felt before that, that there was an alternative, so they've, they've accepted pain. So much of dance is formatted around the construction of shoes. Typically, I'm putting on shoes and dreading the next pair and taking them off between takes and putting them back on um, just to give some, you know, foot relief. But with these, it was a completely different experience. You can see where in a so-called normal, regular high heel that there's air gaps because the foot is only contacting the shoe in the ball of the foot mainly, underneath your metatarsal bones and in the heel. You can see how there's so much pressure in the ball of the foot. It's such an unstable situation that the toes have to contract. And what we then compare it is you can look at the foot in my high heel and you can see how there's full body contact. So the entire foot is contacting, uh, being contacted with the shoe. So you're distributing your weight in a way where all your weight's not on the ball of your foot. Your entire load is being shared. So the weight distribution is different. That's, that's the main reason you're not going to be stressing your knee and your hip and your back so much. You, you have the support for, you, for your, your arch. You have the support underneath the ball of your foot. And then you offload the pressure points. So you can see it as well as talk about it. It really helped me uh, a lot that you came into my life and helped me feel better. And you know, going through and being able to exercise longer and play tennis longer because of what you did for my feet. My grandfather created a, the first shoe store in the, in the family in the early 1900s in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, and that was called Olaf Shoes. Well, it's, it's very personal for me. I mean, this is a very personal journey because it's not only, you know, for, for myself and, and, you know, my own desire to wear comfortable heels, but I have a daughter, you know, and, and I watch young women go out there and kill their feet, and I see them come into my office, and, and, and I see, you know, the 50-year-old women who apologize for the way their feet appear because they've worn heels all their life. The higher-end retailers taught me something, and they said, we don't want people to know anything about your shoes. We want them to look at the shoe on the shelf, notice that they're beautiful, and then we want to surprise them how, how wonderful they feel. We're, we're leading with beauty. We want people to be attracted to that shoe because it's a work of art, and then we want them to be surprised it's also a masterpiece of engineering.